You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, prison stories, because why should late night cable have all the fun? I want to talk about this Jeremy Pauly guy that I sent you a picture of him the other day and his face, half of his face is tattooed like a reptile Mm -hmm. and he's got eyeballs on his neck and those look like little needles sticking out of his head. Yeah, he has some kind of like gauges or brads or something embedded in his scalp. Yeah, weird, huh? Yeah, it's not normal. He got sentenced. uh, He was sentenced in Pennsylvania to two years of probation for this cadaver stealing scandal at Harvard Medical School. I I did a little reading up when you flagged for me that you wanted to talk about him. And uh, it it seems like there's a major market in this country for body parts. And I loved I loved the places that people were selling them, like on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and next door. I remember Ed Gein, the notorious serial killer who used to skin and tan his victims in rural Wisconsin when they based silence make of the, the lambs on him, right? And I just remember that that poor guy had to work all alone because there was no social networking. But if Ed Gein had been around now, he wouldn't have to kill anybody. He could have just know. bought some cadaver skin. It is revolting. But the guy you're talking about got probation. Is that just because they felt yes. like in prison he would last about three minutes or, or what? Oh, no. They don't care how long people are lasting in prison. Oh, yes, they oh. do. Are you ready for this? Sam Bankman yeah. Freed, the crypto king? I yeah. Love, I love this. His parents, Did he get out? No, not yet. But his, oh. his parents have new lawyers, and they are begging the judge for a more lenient sentence because— they fear that their son is so awkward that harm will come to him in prison because he is so socially awkward. And I'm thinking, I don't know anybody who's like a smooth cultural fit who ends up in prison, <laughs> except for yeah. maybe like the the white collar corporate thievery prisons. And maybe he'll end up in one of those. I mean, he's not a violent guy. What makes them so sure they're going to send him to San Quentin? They're going to pay? I don't know. I don't know anything about how prisons run. I'm just sending you a picture of this guy that bought body parts and then <laughs> sold them all over the place. I just and I, human skins inside buckets. What's the weirder thing to sell the body parts or to buy the body parts? I, uh, but that's a really good question. I want to know what they're doing with it. I don't want to know what they're doing with it. I want to talk I about do. Sam Bankman Freed, who makes me less <laughs> nauseous, although maybe that's wrong. Maybe he should make me more nauseous. A lot of people get fleeced by a lot of people, though, and they they go to fancy jail yeah. because they're rich. Yeah, I, you th- know? I think You that... and I wouldn't make it to fancy jail. Well, it would depend on what you did. But last time I checked, it wasn't like you were making a reservation on kayak where you could pick the three-star or the four-star prison. I think that that's not really up to you. Okay. Let's just say, for instance. Yes. Wait, I just have to tell you, I had this thought of, like, price line for prison. But go ahead. <laughs> if, you were, if you were a certain gentleman, about six feet tall, with kind of an orange face, and mop of really weird looking hair and you got like 90 convictions on charges do you think you would go to Alcatraz or Sing Sing or wherever all the bad prisons are I don't even know the worst ones I'm thinking, no you go to country club prison yeah I, I mean it won't be Mar-a-Lago but then again what is but I've seen these prisons in People Magazine okay yeah. People Magazine would be my source. Yeah, I see I'm, that you're really digging deep here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm retired. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, there were these rich people on the TV that had their own TV show, and they got busted for tax cheating or oh, whatever. Yeah, the Grizzlies. Were... They don't go to the prisons that we see when we watch, you know, jail or jailed or any of those. Real reality jail shows. The shows that they run on CNN on Sunday night when they are too busy to actually go out and get some real news. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yes. They're staying in this 
prison that's got like a golf course and a gym. It's like what all the, the ladies stayed at when they got busted for lying to get their kids into California colleges. That you, whole scandal, you you they were all movie stars. You understand how hard it is. You just don't understand. There are no macarons in these prisons. There are yeah, no, yeah. you know, you can't be on your uh, Malibu diet in, in these prisons. It's not, it's very hard. Well, yeah. What about their o- Ozempic shots? Do you well, just, I think you just get fat. I don't think they give you Ozempic. <laughs> So uh, how did we get on this topic? Because of your photograph that you're obsessed oh, with. Oh, that crazy dude. Okay, so why do the worst criminals always look like criminals? Look at a picture of John Wayne Gacy, for example. You go criminal. No, no, no. You no, you didn't until he, until he got busted and you saw him in the mugshot. You go creepy clown at the parade. Keep my kid away from him. <laughs> creepy is... killer clown. And yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer, he looks like a criminal. No, he looks like every... this guy. What the? What no, the... He, I'm sorry, Jeffrey Dahmer looks like every unemployed guy in the state of Wisconsin. I'm sorry, unemployed guys in the state of Wisconsin. Oh no, but... no, I th- no, no. The state guys in Wisconsin, oh, uh, they weigh more. That's all I say. You moved away <laughs> before went... the meth. They epidemic. drink beer and eat cheese. You you moved away before the meth <laughs> epidemic. I'm sorry, but you need to catch up. I don't up. do meth and drink beer and eat cheese. You need to catch up. Not really. I, I like it out here <laughs> where we're healthy. Where you it's... make the meth that they consume in in uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Wait, this has to do with making meth, kind of, sort of. Yes. I did, however, order from Amazon this like cart thing that goes underneath your sink. Okay. And you put all your chemicals in it uh-huh. so that they're organized. And then when you go to look for something, you just pull it out. And you don't have to, like, climb all the way into the back of the sink to look for, like, shoe polish or something stupid. Wait, you keep so- shoe polish in your medicine cabinet? No, no, not the medicine cabinet. Kitchen. Underneath the kitchen oh, sink. Oh, I thought you said bathroom. I'm sorry. Oh, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> have some more beer and cheese criminals faces beer and cheese <laughs> but i mean if i was gonna make math i suppose i could do it in the bathroom as well as the kitchen maybe i need to order two of those <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't watched breaking bad lately i need a refresher course you know what even i watched all the way through breaking bad oh. except for the finale that's we didn't so watch you the finale. that's so you <laughs> i know I know. We don't know how it ended. Uh, do you so. have any plans to watch it? Kind of. Okay. I mean, we discuss it every now and then. But I don't think that we want to watch it with the baby. You could watch it with the baby now. No, he's, You've got approximately well, he's starting to two years look to around. watch it. No, no. you got two years to watch it with the baby around that's true he won't remember he will have no idea babies have the most amazing memory slash amnesia it's great he looks kind of messy because he has no teeth oh that's so mean to that baby <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't know remember he won't remember anything i say yeah but this this podcast is going to be available forever forever he'll yeah, always yeah. know that you said that he looked like a, a, a meth addict <laughs> He'll always know. He'll never get over it. His mom doesn't listen. That doesn't mean he won't. Although I have to say, my kids have no idea what I sounded like on the radio. They have no idea what I sound like on the podcast. Their friends listen. Their friends bother them and say, hey, your mom. <laughs> and and they just don't want to know. I, they haven't read the book. Nothing. They, they're they like, you're bad enough in person, mom. That's enough. <laughs> I, they don't actually yep. say that. That's what I interpret their complete indifference to anything I do for work to, to mean. That's that's how I choose well, to interpret Molly, it. my oldest listens to us regularly. Well, good. And calls me. Uh-oh. And Thank she God. understands that, like, I don't really think that my grandson is a meth addict because he has no teeth. <laughs> I'm delighted that— I'm just that saying he I'm... fits the profile. Yes, I see. <laughs> You know what? I was very excited speaking of drugs. This is this is how bad it is to get old. I was excited to see that the president of the United States is on the same drug that I'm on. And I'm like, what? What's he taking? It's, it's just one of the what? billions of drugs he's on because he's old. But I yeah. was. this is how stupid I am. I got excited that the president. 
What's yeah, this? This is how garage. empty and meaningless. You, uh, I, and then See, as I, soon as I thought that, I thought, what is wrong with you? That's like saying, I eat carrots. He eats carrots. We're soulmates. I blame it on social media that we now feel like we have a connection with people we have no connection with. And, well, and by I the way, I excited every every time his dog bit someone <laughs> because I have dogs that bite. And I would say, yes, I'm not a bad dog mom because look, this is the first dog and he's attacking all the Secret Service guys have band aids. Yeah, we, oh, we may be fostering a German Shepherd. We don't know because our our German Shepherd is a terrible hostess, but we hope she's old enough and that we've talked enough sense into her that she would be willing to accept a foster because at this point there are so many dogs in shelters, as you well know, because everybody who adopted a dog during COVID has had a change of heart. But this is not that. This is, oh, it's so sad. The owner of the dog passed away and now... The dog. The is, dog has nowhere to the go. The dog is in a shelter, so you know. I we've been dog. here's the thing. I ask the spousal unit, could we foster? Could we try? Could we try? Because he does most of the walking. Make that all of the walking, and I do all <laughs> of the treat giving and food and brushing and you know snuggling. Sure. You make her fat, and he gives her the Ozempic. Shh, shh, <laughs> don't, don't say that. And I caught him on a day when he won like a big award. And so he was feeling very, very chuffed. And that's when I sprung the news on him that we're going to possibly have this foster dog or possibly it will be a disaster. So, um, but this poor dog, I just thought like, that's got to be just the worst. And then of course, because I'm disgusting and rude, I thought, I wonder if the owner died at home. I wonder if he was locked in his house with the dead owner. I wonder, um, yeah, here, it's a story that'll make you feel so good. No, they <laughs> don't. The eat, no, adopted. they don't eat their owner. They don't. They don't. I don't want to hear that. They were locked in with a dead old lady for three weeks in a trailer. Oh, I would need. Her and they too. were the like the most dysfunctional cats I've ever that met. That was in my that life. order lady. And we, this is a different what, old lady. Oh, okay. But she and these she had three cats and a dog. And she died, and nobody bothered to check on her. She, I guess she didn't have family. And uh, three weeks later, somebody smelled something. And so they pulled these three cats out. And the dog. Um, and the dog, yes. We adopted one. This cat was the most dysfunctional. <laughs> we felt sorry for one of them. Eve named it Kava. Kava bit her in the face. Well, just like the old lady. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Like She learned. <laughs> It's like, hey, I'm still alive. But, That's uh, right. No, uh, so wait, 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 wait. This, this was a cat yeah. that knew the right thing to do. It just wasn't situationally aware. It understood right. that this is a valuable, yes. life-saving ability to bite a human in the face. <laughs> in the face. It not missed, when they're laying next to you in bed right, it and missed, they're breathing. It, it missed the memo that just because the human is lying down doesn't mean that it's dead. This is our best podcast ever. <laughs> I think I think you should enter it in and tell the award, whatever it is. There's podcast Oscars or something. This it would win. Our most because we're disgusting. we are giving a lot of information here. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I would love to foster a dog, but um my husband says no because he knows it will never leave once it's here. Yeah, I don't trust you. No, yeah, I'm no. not. I'm not trustworthy when it comes to my animals. I'm very trustworthy. We have fostered one, two, three, four times, and we have succeeded every time. So, see, I, and I'm always plotting on where I could hide them. <laughs> Your husband <laughs> wants I, to no, kill no, him and no, feed him to the cat. I'm like, I need another goat. Where can I hide that goat? Oh yeah, maybe in that tree over there. <laughs> you want another goat? No, I want it like a pig or something to go with the goat. Oh, for God's sakes. You're like, I know an old lady who swallowed a fly. This is terrible. (laughs) We have all this land. No more. It should support things. No. No, your your husband is supporting things. Well, yeah. No. 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 People don't let their goats usually get old, nor their pigs especially get old. And so if you have an animal and you're not going to eat it, then it's going to come to a point in its life where, 
like those of us, we go looking at the president of the United States and we think, oh, I'm on the same medication. And you'll start looking around at your pets and going, oh, I'm on the same medication. Yeah. You know what? I have a dog that takes the same medication. See? See? That's how you know you're old. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 